Hi, I'm here today with Peter Clausey of CBLT. How are you today, Peter? Very good, excited to be back. Uh, so I was reading that cobalt is in high demand at the moment and it has spiked 128% over the past 12 months. And auto companies are in a desperate search to procure and make deals with cobalt miners. What are your thoughts on this? And do you think this will directly affect CBLT? Uh, boy, that's such a broad question. And yes and yes. Uh, we have strong cobalt assets that are in demand globally. In fact, we're going to Australia this week. By the time this video airs, we should be back from Australia with results carrying out M&A activity with our Ontario and Quebec assets. Globally, uh, cobalt uh, started in February of 2016, cobalt was at $21,750 a ton. And it's up to 75,000 at the moment, correct? Right, yeah. so your 128% your number is nice, but it's far more than that dating back to February of 16. So two years ago, mm -hmm. it's gone from 21,000 to 75,000. There's a decrease in supply. You know, the Katanga mine in the Congo is coming on stream. Uh, whether it's going to reliably produce more cobalt or not is still up in the air to be seen. Katanga has had some issues in management. They've had some uh, compliance issues. They've had to restate financials. And it's the Congo, so infrastructure is yeah. a challenge. Yes, and, and, I, yes, and I know 60% of cobalt, I've, correct me if I'm wrong, comes from the Congo, and there's lots of issues around that. Well, there are. and you know, the, the, the Congo is where the four horsemen of the apocalypse graze their horses. It's just a, a horrible human tragedy. Since King Leopold showed up and massacred the, the Congolese, it has been a never-ending source of suffering. The, the people have suffered through war and famine and pestilence and invasion and political instability. And had they been able to get their mining industry under control, it could have been a beautiful country. They could have done what Saudi Arabia has done and evolved economically. Instead, the Congo continues to suffer and the production of cobalt suffers with it. And as CBLT is based in Canada, yes. um, and most of your projects are in Northern Ontario. And I know your flagship project, uh, Copper Prince, has had some really interesting sample results come back. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Sure. We picked that property up about two years ago. Uh, we thought there was cobalt at the south end. Historically, that property has been worked since the late 1880s. Uh, significant amounts of gold, copper, nickel up in the north end. We thought there was cobalt in the south end. And our work there has proven that up. Uh, we just got results back from the Ontario Geologic Survey. The district geologists did work on their own. In Kirkland Lake, yes? Oh, no, in Sudbury as well. Oh, perfect. They did Kirkland Lake at another property and in Sudbury. Oh, amazing. Yep, quite happy with that. And the results came back extremely strong. That was press released in uh, early January. And three of the samples ran over the detection limits. Two for cobalt, one for copper. Oh, perfect. So those are still in the lab. So extremely strong results, much global interest in buying into that property as a potential source of cobalt and the gold make, we think will make it economic. And I know you've also just partnered with Winmar, Winmar which is an Australian based company and you are off, as you mentioned earlier, just to Australia any day now. What can we expect from this trip? The Winmar guys have been great to deal with. They are at their hearts engineers. So the, we're selling them one property in Gauganda and optioning two others. It has been a very predictable process of A, B, C, D, E, moving down the checklist with Winmar. Mm -hmm. Rod Sainty, who's their managing director, I believe, has been a joy to deal with. Every deal has problems that crop up. We've been able to deal with them quite easily. I'm looking forward to seeing him in person when I'm down in Melbourne in a couple of weeks. And I know, Peter, you're biggest focus, and I think what I've learned from working with you, is you love honesty, and I know you want to make your shareholders happy, and more importantly, make them money. So what can we expect from CBLT in 2018? It's actually not honesty, it's transparency. Transparency makes for good governance and good compliance. So thank you. 2018, we expect to make as much money from our pens in the boardroom as we do from the drill bit. We bought properties before cobalt became a thing because we thought it would. And we're benefiting from the uptick in the cobalt price. Our properties are in demand. What it also means is we're one of the first places people come when they want to sell a property that has cobalt on it. So we have many deals in the pipeline. Uh, we won't be able to close on everything, but we expect a steady stream of M&A news as we buy and sell properties and as we work those properties. One of the places we will work will be the property you mentioned, Auto Lake up in uh, 
Larder Lake Mining Division near the Quebec border. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Ontario government did work there as well, found a new gold discovery, undocumented. We'll be back in there this summer working that. Oh, perfect. And they discovered that, I think, in the, over the course of this past year, being 2017, um, by the local geologist's office in Kirkland right. Lake, yes. Yeah, the resident geologist office is a great program run by the Ministry of Northern Development and Mining. It's one of those rare beasts, a government program that works better than they thought it would. I've never met a resident geologist who wasn't helpful and proactive and kind and willing to get out in the field and get dirty and help advance projects. So kudos to whoever dreamt up that uh, program. It's been terrific. Well, perfect. Thank you for joining us today, Peter. And for those of you at home, please feel free to leave your comments below in our comment section. Would love to hear your feedback. Thanks.